So this week, I didn't make a whole lot of progress. So I'm at that 80% point where the last 20% takes forever to actually get done. It's all the little nitpicky details and that kind of stuff that it has to be done, but it takes a while to get there. Uh, the only real physical change that happened this week was that I mounted the servo and I replaced those two printed bearings with actual real ones. They, Amazon finally delivered those. So I thought this week would be a good time to talk about this prototype's pros and cons and kind of the future of the project. So let's start with the cons first. It's always good to get the bad stuff done right at the beginning. So first up is the roller. The selfie stick that I used as a roller is not even close to concentric and it wobbles like a kid with inner ear problems. Uh, I plan to replace it with something else, maybe a piece of PVC with the dowel inside it. The issue is that I it has to be straight and way more concentric than what I have now or else it's just not worth it. I can get a straight piece of pipe, but to keep it concentric, I'll have to drill mounting holes dead center in the material, and that's way easier said than done. In the same vein as that, the belt that I'm using to drive the roller has to be replaced. I used just some thin wire to stitch the two halves of the belt together to make one loop, and that made a huge bump on the back of the belt, and it's so close to the edge of the print bed that it rocks and bumps whenever it hits, so even if I get a super concentric and perfect roller, that's going to cause issues too, so I need to do something about that. So next up, the linear rod as the support on what I call the far side. If I had used an actual hardened precision ground linear rod, it might have been fine, but the one I used is really soft, like the linear bearing has started to grind, uh, grind grooves in it, and the rod is undersized by a fair bit. Uh, the, the prototype 2 of this, the next version, will have V-slot on both sides, and it'll actually have motors on both sides to drive it, so that there's no risk of any kind of uh, misalignment or being out of sync, so everything will be perfectly aligned because everything's driven the same way. Finally, the box being hand cut is a huge issue. Because none of the dimensions are accurate, it's made it really hard to design for this, and that's the main reason that the original Fusion file is so broken. I'll get more on that in a little bit. I redesigned it with a new model to be cut out of two layers of six millimeter plywood or MDF or whatever material is best, uh, so that I can get that kind of machine level precision, but that's all on the version two of the prototype. This first version is just not super great. Well, that about ends it on the cons. So let's talk about the pros. So some of the good things about the design, the Z-axis, uh, I'm super happy with how that turned out. Tying the two sides together with the belt uh, was, a, was a really good idea. It makes it so that every, I can drive it with one side and everything is perfectly aligned and everything is great. So I know that I always have the right amount of material available and it's, it just works out really, really well. And with the exception of the far side support, I do like the way that the X and Y motion came out. I've designed a couple of these systems, but so, so I wasn't super worried about getting it right, but I'm happy that it did come out as, as good as it did. So most of the work this week has gone into fixing the Fusion 360 model. So the original model started as an Ender 3 model that I downloaded and I was, because originally I was planning to use that as the base, but then I redesigned that to using the wiper as the X and Y gantry. And to do that, I was going to use the Tronxy X1, which I already had. So I had to find and input a model for that, which I did. But so then I had the Ender 3 in there, I had the Tronxy X1 in there, and then I had the stuff that I designed in there. And then because I wasn't using the Ender 3, I deleted all that stuff but apparently there were some projected planes and some dependencies that were a part of that that I didn't realize were a thing. So when I deleted that, it messed everything up and I had to go back and go through the, the whole timeline and repair it. And there's still dependencies that are broken. If I run the compute all command, it absolutely breaks the model. So I just don't touch that command. So my way to fix that has actually just been start from the ground up. I opened a new blank file and I designed the whole thing from scratch, the right way this time. So that's, I, I did, the whole design is based on user parameters that I've set. So everything is changeable. Everything can be, there's, there's the whole list of user parameters that you can just edit any of those and the whole model, it'll propagate through the entire model. And I've tried to use as few reference faces and dependencies as possible. So every individual body is self-contained and isn't reliant on anything else existing. 
So if I decide to delete a model or redo something, I shouldn't cause any downstream failures. I say shouldn't because it probably still will, but I try to minimize that as much as possible. I even did my best to make sure that every joint connects in a place that an actual fastener will go. So like screw holes are where I did joints and things like that. I tried to do as few like planers and that kind of stuff that would be easy to do in the model, but not something that's can be replicated, you know, in, in a physical thing. So that way there's no, nothing's mounted just by CAD model magic. Everything is actually bolted together and everything. So that's what I really, what I did this week. That's the amount of work that I've done. Uh, I also went through the, the firmware and I fixed that. I got rid of all the um, thermal runaway and thermal protections and everything like that because I'm not using any kind of heater. So I don't need all that in there. And it was causing issues like uh, cold extrusion prevention and that kind of stuff because I'm using the e-motor as the roller. So I need to be able to just to tell it to go and it goes. So I had to disable a bunch of protections, uh, mess with what pins are mapped to what, get the servo to work. Uh, the first servo I bought broke. I don't know what happened. I was using it and then it just spazzed out. Like, like I told it to go to a location, it spazzed out and then just didn't accept any more commands. So I had to send that back to Amazon and they sent me a new one. So that was a good couple of days waiting for that to come in. But so a lot of, a lot of things I did this week were all very under the hood changes, nothing that's really big and flashy. Other than a new roller, I'm kind of at a, at a, a stopping point now. So, so unfortunately this brings me to some bad news because of everything that's going on. Um, the reason that I've had as much free time as I have had to do this is because my job is delayed. And that also means though that the funding for this project is delayed. And I, I'm at the point now where I need to start spending actual money on this. Cause up till now I've used just parts I already had and um, stuff that I, when I went to my parents' house, I used their stuff for, like the wood uh, materials and that kind of thing. I think I've spent 20 to $30 on this whole project to total, but now I need to buy the laser, I need to buy the powder, I need to start buying some more things, which I'm looking at, you know, $250, $300 worth of parts that I need to get. So unfortunately this project has to go on a bit of a hiatus. This is gonna be the last video for at least a little while until I start working and start getting funds in to work on this. I hope you've enjoyed this project so far. It's been a lot of fun to work on and I, I really want to keep going on it. I want to get, part, get some working parts out of this, but it just can't right now. And I hope that you'll stay subscribed for this because there will be more parts coming to this. There's just gonna be a bit of a break. Thank you for everyone who has subscribed, by the way. I've just crossed over the triple digits threshold. I'm at 100 subscribers, which in the grand scheme of things is not a lot but in my little corner of the internet, it, uh, it makes me happy to, to see that I've grown this much in the last couple of weeks. So hopefully that'll keep going as w whenever I get the funds to keep working on this project. But uh, yeah, if you like this video, do the thumbs up thing. Um, I don't really have a word for this. I guess throw, throw the word bibbles down in chat if uh, or down in the comments if you watch to this point. That's the name of my cat. His name is Bibbles. It's like Bubbles, but with an I.